but I've invited uh, Bishop Hardy to come by here this morning, as you would have thought, as you've been wondering where he has been all these years, um, all these months. Well, he's, he's right here with us, and he will be breaking the bread of life this morning. Could you please stand and put your hand together as we receive the servant of the Lord, Reverend Hardy, to the podium. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you very much, Dr. Beeson. Let me take this opportunity in greeting the household of faith in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I should also like to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I can feel him in this place. I can feel him in this place, in spite of the circumstances that are prevailing, the spirit of the living God still dwells amongst us. He prevails in our midst, and we'd like to acknowledge him. I should also like to acknowledge Dr. Beeson and uh, Dr. F.A. Beeson and uh, Sister Beeson. Also acknowledging Pastor Oral Beeson and his family members. The Men's Fellowship Department like to acknowledge them. From the vantage point that I was sitting, to me they look militant. Very, very militant. And I could not help but... Uh, acknowledging them in a special way. Then to all the elders, the board of elders of this congregation, want to salute you in standing with the servant of God in carrying on this tremendous work in this part of the vineyard. May God give you the strength to continue then I should also like to acknowledge the praise and worship team and the musicians. Uh, it was, it, I, I visited a congregation not too long ago. And, <laughs> and I said to myself, I wish the, the synergy of praise and worship could be re-energize in the lives of the Christian community because a number of congregations do not know the power and the impact of praise and worship. It's a biblical ministry and wherever I go and see the praise and worship team along with the musician functioning in their ministry, I have less fear in coming into the podium. So God bless you. God bless you. I should also like to acknowledge those of you that are worshiping with us on the various platforms. May the Lord continue to bless you. And then all the lovely members and visitors that are in the face-to-face -face gathering, I greet you well in the name of the Lord. Sister Hardy and myself deemed it as an honored privilege to be back in the house. When we came in this morning, before greeting us, Dr. Beeson turned to Sister Hardy and said, you guys are fired. But uh, I know that working with Dr. Beeson for probably near to 40 years, he's, he's not as young as he's looking. <laughs> we have been around for quite, uh, quite some moons. But I know that he is a merciful and a forgiving person. But, you know, I don't think I have ever expressed it to the congregation, but I do 
request your sincere prayers as about three and a half years ago I started writing a paper for a university in Cyprus and I am on the final leg by the 27th of September I should have written the final line but the next six months is three times tougher than the three and a half years. So I do need your prayer. It is not because Sister Hardy is dragging me around the place. It is because of the dissertation that is impacting on my movement. So I ask your sincere prayer as I come to the final leg of this dissertation. And then I was informed that a number of members are eager to lay their hands on uh, my author biography, and especially to see the building, the remnants of the building, that at the age of 13, I was tempted to burn down with Brother Bruce in that building. But I tell you something, Dr. Beeson and myself, we are in consultation. We advise you, don't purchase the book on Amazon because we are working out a special package for this congregation. And Dr. Beeson will inform you about the strategic move that we are planning. We are in kingdom building, and whatever we do, supplement each other. So Dr. Bisu will inform you more about that. God richly bless you. For the pivotal text that was read from our scripture this morning, I'd like to for us to stand together as I just emphasize one verse from St. Matthew chapter 14. Would you stand with me for the rereading of the Holy Word of God? Verse 24 of St. Matthew 14. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. I feel like reading that again. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. May the Lord be pleased to have his richest blessings to the reading of his word. Shall we all say amen. God richly bless you. You may be seated. The message that I am inspired to bring to this congregation at this time is keep moving to the other side in spite of the storm. Keep moving to the other side in spite of the storm. All of us in this journey called life do have our individual and collective storms, figuratively and in the natural. Life in itself is a stormy episode from conception to the grave. Our lives have been punctuated with storms of one kind 
or another. The first thing that we would like to consider from the text is the constraint Jesus put upon the disciples to go to the other side. According to verse 22 of St. Matthew 14, it reads thus. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. The constraint evidently was ur urgent because we note the term straightway, which is immediately, right now, no de delay. Many scholars have deliberated on this verse, and especially the word constraint, because the word constraint in the Greek is coming from a military discipline. It was the Roman soldiers who, who introduced this concept in Palestine while they were uh, settling, settling and uh, maneuvering in the Jewish territory. The command of the Roman soldier to an individual to carry the soldier's load. It was not optional. It was not debatable. When a Roman soldier carrying his, uh, his luggage and he came to, to an individual and said to the individual, could you take my load? There was no debating. There was no arguing. It was a compulsory, compulsory command. And so for the, for the author of the book of Matthew to use the word constraint, it simply means that Jesus was not smiling with his disciples. It was an urgent command. The, the, the many scholars feel that the disciples were very reluctant to move from this side to the other side for various reasons. For one, they had just experienced the feeding of the 5,000 men plus women and children. So this side became a comfort zone. Who would want to leave this side when there were plenty fish and bread? This side of comfort. There are times Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, has a destination for us to the other side. But because of certain comforts that we can enjoy on this side, the Holy Spirit has to implement constraining effort because as people, as human beings, we like to, we like to reside in the things that we know, rather than taking risks in going to the unknown. And if I, I, I would have used some, some Jamaican colloquialism, but I see Sister Hardy looking at me uh, to, 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 to express how the reluctancy in us as human beings for removing from the side that we are acquainted with, and especially if this, this side has some element of favorableness to us, it is very difficult 
for us as human beings to move from this side to the other side. But there comes a time when we have to move out of our comfort zone. Move out of our comfort zone. The disciples, they were content with the miracle of the five loaves and the two fishes. And they were, they were looking for more. The reason why Jesus had to constrain them, although they might not have expressed it verbally, but in their action, they were, they were getting ready to get their next plate in line because they were looking for more ah, bread and fish. But my brothers and my sisters, the Holy Spirit in his divine wisdom many times take us through a journey to the other side. And if I had time, I would make mention of Mrs. Lot uh, moving from this side of Sodom and Gomorrah and moving up to the mountain. But I am not going to double in that just now. Jesus was emphatic about the constraint. He is the master and it is he who is directing the affairs of our lives. The songwriter said, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what glory he shed on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey. My brothers and sisters, I feel constrained this morning to say to us, it is movement time. It is movement time. There is a side that we are not seeing. But I sense in my spirit that this congregation is being constrained to move from this side. I don't know what the other side looks like. I do not know what the Holy Spirit is up to. He did not divulge it to me. It, he, he just Press upon me to come by here to say to somebody, to say to the congregation, it is movement's time. Move from here to there. <clears throat> we note the example that Christ set in preparation for the movements to the other side. And hear me well. He sent, first of all, he sent the multitude away. The text says, and when he had sent the multitude away, because of the cumbrances that we may encounter on the journey to the other side, we cannot travel with excess baggage. Somebody hearing me? Somebody hearing me? It is movement's time. And I sense in my spirit that there are some luggage that might be, might, might be hanging around. The Holy Spirit says, send them away. Because this journey, this journey is a unique journey. Hallelujah. And we should not have anything that will hold us down. Nothing extra. Nothing to hinder us to get to the other side. Then the second thing we note in, in getting to the other side, in preparation, is that it states in the text, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was all alone. I am trying to hurry to get to uh, the, the, the essence of the message. But uh, if we are going to get to the other side, prayer should not be seen as an option. Prayer should be a mandatory facet in getting to the other side. 
because when we come to the text, we are going to notice that while going to the other side, there are some demons and devils that are perching on the wings just to devour us and to disrupt our movement to the other side. And prayer, prayer, prayer is the only implement. Prayer and fasting is the only implement that can uproot and throw down the strategies that these demons and devils are, are getting uh, prepared for us. If we are going to get to the other side, we must spend quality time in prayer and i wish if i if i had time to to deal with prayer but the songwriter said when he, he prayed he prayed jesus prayed unto the father every day from the manger to the cross not a moment time was lost jesus prayed unto the Father all the way. If we are going to get to the other side, my brothers and my sisters, every day we must engulf ourselves in the balm of prayer ah, so that we can preserve on this journey because this journey is a constraining journey. But not only it is a constraining journey. It is a conflicting journey because there is a paradox in the text. Here, verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. By, v by way of our logics, it is not, uh, it is not logical. You, we, can't, we can't understand the, the paradox in this verse. If it is Jesus, if it is Jesus, and we have no doubt that it was not another spirit, it was not a strange spirit, it was Jesus who said to the disciples, get into the ship and let's move out of here. Let's get over there. Why, 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 why should be contrary wind? Why should be endurances in the life of the disciples? But notice this. The storm came because they were in the will of God. And that perplexed my mind. Uh, it perplexed my mind. How can you be in the will of God and storm and devil storm uh, blow up against your life uh, when you have been living right, uh, when you have been walking right, uh, when you have been talking right, uh, when you have been doing all your religious duties uh, before God. Storms just erupt uh, and disturb our life. But oh, thank God to be in the will of God. If if they had disobeyed Jesus and stayed on the other side, they would have been in a crowd of people where they would be very popular at the moment. They might have been even treated like celebrities because of their relationship with Jesus. But going to the other side, hallelujah, in the midst of the night, we are alone seemingly. And I want you to notice that. It is only seemingly uh, that we are alone because they obeyed Christ. They were now in a boat all alone in the midst of the sea in a storm. Sometimes getting to the other side can be very lonely and can be very contrary. Ah, 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 I, I can personally testify what it feels like. When you, when you, you know that you are doing your best for God. 
and you feel that God should sugar coat you and give you all the comfort and it look as if God forget you. I don't know if you have ever been in a storm figuratively or literally and you cry out for God and God not even paying you any mind. You feel like, you feel like, sometimes uh, you feel like you have made the wrong decision in life to embark upon this journey because God seems to forget you. Even the psalmist, even the psalmist question God, how long will you forget me in the midst of my trouble? Oh, I feel, I feel somebody here. I feel somebody here. You you are in the midst of your storm and God not even answering you and you feel all alone and you are questioning God. Where are you God? And even some of your compatriots they are looking at you and asking you, where is your God? Because if you were a Christian and you are, you are walking right, how comes all of these botheration? How comes all of this frustration is evolving in your life? But oh, can I say to some, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, ah, but in, 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 back in Jamaica, the old time people used to say, it might be for long, but it is not forever. Ah, ah, can I say to somebody, you are in the midst of your storm, in the dark of your night, but the Holy Spirit just plick. I just inspire my heart to say, your morning is coming. Your three o'clock is coming. It might be long, but it won't be forever. Sometimes getting to the other side can be very lonely. It can be very contrary. Ah, there are two kinds. Two kinds of storms in our lives. Storms of correction. For example, Jonah, he got caught in a storm because he, 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 would, not, he would not confine himself to, to the constraint of God. Oh, can I just drop the scene for good measure for our edification? When God constrains us, we should not fight God's constraint. Uh, we should comply with God's constraint. Because hear me, hear me, it is easy. It is much easier for God to come to our rescue when the storm is a test other than when it is for correction. Uh, just read the story of Jonah. Uh, for, for him to be corrected, to get back on track, uh, he went down, he, he, he called it uh, to the belly of hell, where his head was wrapped around with, with God in the light of his words and do his goodwill. The second, the second type of storm is for our perfection, such as we see here in this text, St. Matthew 14. It was not a storm of correction. It was a storm of perfection. Jesus wanted to bring the disciples to a new dimension in life, to another side of life where they can see the power and the glory. Can I say to us, can I say to us that many times in our lives, for God to get the glory out of our lives, we have to go through the storm. Because it is in the midst of the storm when all hopes are lost, when everything seems dreary and contrary, that God shows up. 
Hallelujah. I sense in my spirit that the Holy Spirit is getting ready to show up. Show up on somebody's behalf. You are in the midst of your storm. You are being tossed with winds and waves. Uh, and it feels as if you are all alone. But in a moment of time, I'm going to show you that you are not alone. Uh, there is an unseen eye. Ah, uh, thank God. Uh, there is an unseen eye. No storm is so rugged. Uh, no wind is so boisterous. No waves are so dangerous that the eyes of God uh, cannot see us uh, and see our trials and temptation. Let me see if I can get to it. Ah, uh, uh, verse 25. Ah, Jesus saw them and knew their needs during the storm. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them. Ah, uh, Mark, Mark put it in a more distinct manner. Mark chapter 6, 48. And he saw them toiling. In rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. Ah, in the midst of the storm, when it seems as if there is no God to come to your per to come to your rescue in your peril. But hear me, some scholars, some scholars say that where Jesus was on the mountain, sir. I don't, do not have any validation for the theory, so I'm using it cautiously. Some scholar says that where Jesus was on the mountain during that hour of the night, it was between 20 and 30 miles from the disciples. So the distance was significant. But in, in spite of the distance, the highs of Jesus... Hallelujah. I feel like shouting. Uh, I want to say to somebody here today, or maybe you are on the platform, you may feel some distance between you and your Jesus. And you are rowing hard. Uh, you are trying to get to the east. But there is a contrary wind that is blowing you to the west. Hallelujah. But I'd like to say to you, keep on moving. Keep on rowing. Hallelujah. Keep on going to the other side. Because while the devil is trying to get you under, Jesus is on the mountain top watching over you. Yes, he is watching over you. And if Jesus had constrained you to go to the other side, come hell or high water, you are not going to go under. You are going to get over or to the other side because Jesus his eyes are on the sparrow hallelujah somebody help me here ah uh, somebody help me here I feel like it's a movement time to get to the other side. I don't know. I don't know what is happening on this side of your life. But the Holy Spirit beats me to tell you that it is going to be well. Hey! Uh, can I say to somebody, in spite of the storm, in spite of the storm, it is going to be well because Jesus has not forgotten you. He is standing on the mountain top and he is watching you. He is watching you. He is watching all the disadvantages that are thrown at you and he is coming to you soon. Hallelujah. 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 Watch this. Watch this imagery with me. In the fourth watch of the night. And the fourth watch 
of the night is a very significant time period in the history of human being. Many, many scholars say for one, it, is, it was in the fourth watch of the night or the morning when God used to come down and commune with Adam and Eve. The fourth watch. We have, we have a lot of scriptures referenced to the fourth watch of the night. But more significantly, it is believed that more demons and devils are roaming the planet, literally roaming the planet, that hour of the night. And that is the reason why believers who can get up between 3 and 6 o'clock and pray, it is a good habit. It is a good habit because it is the hour of spiritual conflict. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But thank God, while the demons and the devils were getting ready to pull down, to pull down uh, the disciples. And I saw a new clip recently that seems to fit in my text. And the, a crocodile, a crocodile almost uh, dismantled uh, a gentleman in his boat, his boat capsized. The news did not say it, but I am spinning on the news. I want to believe the boat did not, that that gentleman was in, did not capsize accidentally. It is the alligator. I, it is my opinion. It is my opinion. It, it is the alligator, the reptile, under the boat. He bounces upon the boat and flip it over. Lord God, help me. There are some demon alligator uh, that are marooning under our boats. And they are trying to flip our boats over. But God, but God, God is the stabilizer of our boat. And I'd like to make a pronouncement this day. No spiritual alligator, no spiritual crocodile will be able to flip our boat over and then bite us up. Ah, oh God, 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 for he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Ah, can I say to somebody, fear not. Fear not of the billows and the waves, because it shall be well. Rescue is coming to you right now in the fourth watch of your night when it seems all hopes are lost. Dark of the night. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them. And I don't know if you have the imagination like I have. Uh, in the dark hour of that morning, uh, it is said that uh, predators uh, of all kinds, human and animals, that hour of the morning, that is when they prowl around to catch their prey. Thieves, thieves have an understanding that most of us, we go into deep sleep between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So, so they prey upon us in that hour. But thank God, ah, ah, I feel a sweet melody in my spirit. Because while that hour of the night, if I had time to go back to Genesis 19, I would tell you of some predators. Uh, the Bible said they walk around Lot's door for the entire night. 
and could not find the entrance. <laughs> oh, can I say to somebody, you have, you have supernatural guards in that hour of the night when we are most vulnerable. Ah, uh, Gabriel. Gabriel the archangel. Uh, and Michael. They are on patrol around us uh, so no demons and devil uh, can capsize our ship we're gonna make it we're gonna make it and the bible said he saw them toiling and rowing for the wind was contrary unto them and about the fourth watch of the night he came unto them, walking upon the water, and would have passed them. Oh, the disciples, they were terrifying. They were terrified in seeing this figure, because this was never seen in the history of humanity. A figure walking, and these, these men... They were seasoned seamen. Uh, they, were, they, they, were, they were among the best of the sailors of their times. And they have traversed many waters. But they have never seen this, uh, this sight before. A figure walking on this boisterous, cantankerous wave. And when they saw this figure... The only conclusion that they could come to, it is a ghost. Ah, oh, God. Oh, but can I, tell you some, can I say this to somebody? When you see him coming to your rescue, it is not a ghost. I say, it is not a ghost. It is Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conquering liar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep on moving to the other side. Let me just hurry and close. It is, he saw them toiling in ruin. It is Whitney Houston who penned this word. I sing because I am happy. I sing because I am free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender voice I heard, I hear. And let not your heart be troubled. And resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the path he leads, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know. I'd like to assure somebody today, uh, in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your storm, his eye, you may not feel it. You may feel distance from him, but he's watching you. He's watching you. It is Jesus who said that not one sparrow fall to the ground without the knowledge of the Father. Are you not more? Are you not more worthy? Are you not more costly than a sparrow? Ah, uh, can I say to, can I comfort somebody today as I get ready to close? His eye, his eye is watching you. You may be crying and nobody's seeing you. You may feel that you're a part of this congregation and nobody is recognizing the tumult and the trials that you are going through. But I am here to assure you that somebody is watching you. Dr. Beast and uh, his co-pastor, they might not be able to see what you are going through. The elders of the congregation, you may feel uh, that they are not caring uh, and they are not seeing. But let me tell you, somebody greater, somebody greater, 
than the elders. Somebody greater who can see. Oh, God Almighty, he is watching you. He is watching your pains. He is watching your tears. He is watching you. I say he is watching you. He is watching you. Let me close. There is not only, there is not only the constraint and the conflict, but there is the courage to defy logics and get to the other side. We note that Peter responded to Jesus in an unusual manner, very unusual. Peter questioned, first of all, if it is you, if, 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 if you are not a ghost, if it is you, bids me to come. Can I say to somebody, it is Jesus who is now in your presence. Uh, and you can move from one side to the other side. Watch, 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 watch this with me. Jesus said, come. Peter was in the safety of the boat or the ship. Jesus called him the second time out of his comfort zone to, and say, come. I would like to say to somebody today, you can come. You can come. Because it is Jesus who is commissioning you to come. And I know, I know somebody, I feel it in my spirit. Somebody is saying, but Pastor Hardy, you don't know the magnitude of my storm. You do not know the boisterousness of my wave. You can stay there and say to me, come. But I am afraid to move because of the circumstances. But can I assure you, if Jesus said, come, tell all the devil in hell that are ganging up against you that I am going to move. I am going to, you must make a resolution to move. I feel like closing here. I have quite more to go. But I'd like to say to somebody, apply the gastrocopic law in your life. And this law says, and this applies mostly to cyclists, whether motorcyclists or pedal cyclists. As long as the cyclists Stand still. Stand one place. He is going to fall. The law of gravity. The law of gravity. Pulls on him. But as long as the cyclist. Is getting the wheels turning. This law. This gyrographic law. Who overrides the law of gravity and say you cannot pull him down. I will keep him balanced going forward. Can I say to somebody, go forward. Don't stop. Don't stop. In spite of the storm. In spite of, and I'm borrowing Dr. Beeson's word, in spite of what I go on. Is him say so. Uh, in spite of what I go on, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving towards Jesus. As long as you keep your feet going, uh, you might feel like you are sinking. But as long as you keep moving, you are getting closer and closer and closer to Jesus. Where Jesus can reach out. Ah, oh, God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep on moving. 
Keep on moving towards Jesus because he has a outstretched hand that will lift you up. Hallelujah. 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 Keep moving. Keep moving. Yes, I know. I sense it. I feel it. That the billows, the winds are contrary against you. Everything you put your hand to, it's it, it, it seemingly turning upside down. But keep moving. Keep moving. I do not know who you are. But I'd like to close. Keep moving. Keep moving to the other side. Would you stand? Would you stand with me? You do not have to worry. You don't have to be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they won't last always. For there is a friend named Jesus who will wipe. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel assured today that Jesus is going to come to your rescue. I come here to tell you, Jesus did not reveal your condition to me. I do not know what kind of a storm you're going through, whether grieving storm, whether medical storm, financial storm, marital storm. What is it? I don't know. But I like to close in prayer. I'd like to close in prayer for that individual. You are going through your storm. And you know that this message comes to you from the Lord. I would like to pray with you. If you would so be bold enough to just come to the altar. I'm going to turn the microphone over to the shepherd of the house. To pray over your storm. I see, I see you coming out. I see you coming out of that storm. I see, I see that God has brought you here today. God has brought you to this platform to take you out of your storm and take you to the other side. Is there somebody else? Ah, a car says, what do you help me do? You don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid. For joy comes in the morning. I sense, I sense there is somebody else here. You are going through your storm. God spoke to me. God spoke to me and said to me that you are going to come out. He's going to take you out of your storm. His hand, his hand is outward stretch. And just as how physically you are walking out of your seat, you are demonstrating that you are walking towards Jesus to get to the other side. Is there somebody else? You don't have to. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid. God bless you. As Dr. Beeson is getting ready, to come, to pray over your storm, to pray over your storm. Ah, I'd like to invite you. Is there somebody else? Whatever the storm is, whatever your storm is, come. Don't you be afraid. Joy. Joy comes in the morning. There. Yes, oh, there will. There is a friend in Jesus. There is a friend in Jesus. Who will wipe your tears away? Yes, he will. He's, yes, he will. And if your yes. heart is broken, you may be here. Just and you have a relative. You have a relative that you know is going through a storm. And like our brother who stood proxy for his mother in her 94th birthday you can stand in proxy 
for that brother of yours, for that sister of yours, you can stand in proxy that God would take them out afraid. of the storm. Dr. Beeson. Joy come in the morning. Yes, sing it out. Troubles they don't pass away. Why don't you sing it with us? For there's a friend in Jesus. Take your time. Who will wipe your tears away? Yes, sing it. And if your heart Take your time. Away, yes. Just lift your hands and say. Take your time. With him I know I can stand. Uh -huh. No matter what may come away. Yes. My life is in your hands. You don't have to worry. Oh, God. And don't you be afraid. afraid. Joy comes in, in the morning. The morning. Uh -huh. Troubles no, don't last. Yes, there is. Who will wipe your tears away? And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Raise those hands. I know that I can take it. Yes. I know that I can stand. Uh -huh. No matter what may come away. Say it again. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Troubles day don't last away. Hallelujah. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. It's prayer time. And if your heart broken just lift your hands and say raise those hands oh, and say I know that I can make it 